Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You know, there's an interesting story behind malted milk. The successful blending of rich, full cream milk, wheat, and malted barley was first discovered by Mr. William Horlick over 50 years ago. It was an important discovery that gave the world a food which can be called multimin parvo, or much in little. This concentrated food, because of its remarkably digestible and nourishing properties, filled a great need, and throughout all these years has been used by thousands all over the world for infant feeding, for convalescence, for building health both in homes and in hospitals. It is universally used and recommended by physicians everywhere. Following the success of Horlicks, many imitations appeared, which cannot compare with the quality of Horlicks. That is why, throughout all these years, Horlicks has been recognized as the leader and is known today as the great American food drink. You can get Horlicks in both natural and chocolate flavors. Ask for Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yeah, Lum and Abner are still operating the Jotham Down store as two separate businesses. Competitors under the same roof. So far, Abner has gotten practically all the business due to the fact that he has been trading merchandise for any livestock the customer might have to trade. <laughs> he has a large and assorted collection of animals on hand, but very little merchandise left in his side of the store. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at their store. Lum is just answering the telephone. Listen. Yes, Mom. Ah, uh -huh. Well, uh, hold the receiver and I'll ask him. Abner, do you want to swap for a parrot? Swap for a what? A parrot. Paul Parrot. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, who is it? I mean, who is it that wants to swap it? Uh, Miss Dilly, honey, says she's got one she wants to get shut up. Yeah, tell her to fetch him over. I'll swap for him, sure. Hello? Yes, Mom, he says he'll take it. I allowed he would. All right, I'll tell him. All right. Goodbye. Says she'll be over here late this afternoon with him. Well, <laughs> I know that that's one thing that I ain't got to it as a parrot. <laughs> I wonder if he knows how to talk. Yeah, she says he does. Says that's the reason she wants to get shut of him. Talk too much. Yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> Be lots of company for me. Yeah. And him and me can just talk all the time. Yeah, he ought to make you a good running mate. <laughs> you and a parrot. Yeah, I hope you don't want too much for him. I'm just about out of groceries over there. Well, I'll be glad when you're plumb out. You just about ruined the store business here in Pine Ridge with this swap idea you have. What in the world do you aim to do with all them animals anyway? Well, I'm going to sell them. Sell them to who? Why, well... Anybody had a bomb. Yeah. Well, who in the world would want that stuff? Who do you expect to sell them white mice to? Oh, well, there won't be no trouble to sell. They're the handiest things in the world around the place. You see, them white mice run the other mice off. Anybody that's bothered with mice, why, they can just turn some of them white ones loose in the house, and two days' time, all other mice will be run off. Yeah, but that don't work. It does, doesn't it? Uh, Luke Spears tried that a while back. He says they'll run the regular mice off all right, but in a few weeks' time, he had about twice as many white mice on his place as he had at other. Yeah. Well, I'll just see if I can't sell Luke one of my cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a cat ought to have no trouble at all with them white mice. They can see them so much better at night, you know. <laughs> well, don't be turning none of them things loose here in the store. Well, I wouldn't turn none of them loose. No, sir, I'm going to sell them. Them's what doctors use to experiment on, you know, them white mice. Well, I suppose maybe, maybe I can sell them to Doc Miller then. Yeah, <laughs> trouble with Doc Miller, he experiments on his patients. He wouldn't have no use for them. No, no, maybe not. Now, you'd be a big fine and somebody would take that stuff off your hands, though, before they break you up of feeding them. You used up all you had, and that ten sacks of chops you got from me this morning the last feed I've got. Yeah, well, I've got enough stuff to last me till tomorrow. And that is, except for the rabbits. i got to find in some lettuce and carrots for them someplace. I've been trying to think of somebody around here that had an early garden I might buy some off of. He'd pay you just to give them rabbits to somebody. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to have to do something about them. I, I just can't keep track of them. I don't never know how many of them I've got, even. Went out there this morning, I had 102. Just a while ago, Cedric's counted them, and I had 146. 
Well, maybe one of you made a mistake, Count. Man, I don't know. I aim to talk to Cedric about it, but he left eight minutes back. That's been about three hours ago. He's been gone ever since. I don't know where he is. Well, them cows and them chickens, that horse, all that stuff's got to be fed, you know. Yeah, well, I never thought about that at first. I, I just got to find some feed summers, I reckon. Yeah. You had enough stuff of your own to feed without furnishing that circus with feed for them animals of theirs. That's the foolishest thing you ever done, Abner, that deal you made with them. You'll never collect a nickel of that. I was down there Saturday night, carried Evelina to the performance. They never took in fifteen dollars to bounty. Preserves each and all. Yeah, well, I'm safe there, all right, though. I've got a mortgage, you know. Yeah, but what if you have to foreclose on them? Well, I'll take all them animals. Yeah, and then you will be into it showing up. You get some elephants and lions and camels and fishes that over here, you will have to rustle some feed. <laughs> they ain't like feeding white mice and rabbits and fishes that. Oh, no, sure not. You couldn't feed elephants and lions lettuce like I do them rabbits. I know that. You got to get them some hay, or that is elephants. Yeah, it'll take about four wagon loads a day, too. No, no, two is all I'm. Mean. That's what I've been sending over there, two wagon loads a day for the elephants. Yeah, I'm just glad it's used to me. The smartest thing I ever done is when I unsolved partnerships with you. Yeah, but I, I've been beating you all to pieces, too, Ron. I bet I did four times as much business as you have this last week. Well, you've done a lot of business, all right. Sure. But what good's it doing you? You swap brand new merchandise for that collection of animals you got out back there. Well, and I'll get my money out when I go to sell them all. That's when I get my money. Yeah. time you get them sold, though, they'll have all the profit set up. They'll eat up more than they're worth in a couple of weeks' time. Well, I've got the use of the animals all that time. Got the use of them. Yeah, them chickens and ducks and geese and turkeys and guinea, them's all laying eggs and them cows is giving milk. Yeah, but what good's that old wore out horse doing out there and that goat? No, oh, well, of course they ain't worth very much, I don't reckon. I <laughs> reckon I could have got along without them all right. <laughs> yeah, could have got along without all of them, if you ask me. Well, that's all right now, that's all right now. Now, you may as well go ahead and answer it by yourself, Lom. I ain't got nothing left to sell nobody if they did want to buy something. Mm-hmm. This is just what I've been looking for, where I can give somebody a price on stuff without you cutting under me. <laughs> you just illuminated yourself with this swapping idea. I'll get rid of somebody off of it. Hello? This is the Jotham Down store, Eddard's talking. Wish I had something to cut under me. Yes, Mom, he's here. Just a minute, hold the receiver. Here, Emma. Well, if it's somebody want to swap, just tell them I can't do no more trading until I get some more merchandise on them. Well, it's Sister Simpson. She wants to talk to the constable. Oh. I reckon she's got a complaint of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. more like that. Yeah. Hello. Now, this is him. Uh-huh. Well, whose cow is it? Well, run her out, and I'll find out if I can see who she belongs to, and he rest them for letting them stock run loose. Yes, ma'am. We've got a stock loss here in Pine Ridge, and I aim to see it at 10 for us, too. Yeah. Why, sure, you can make them pay for every bit of the stuff she's had up. Uh, well, don't you worry now, Sister Simpson. I'm just proud you call me. All right. Yes, Mom. Now, goodbye. Now, doggies, I'll learn somebody a lesson. What's the matter? Why, folks around here letting the stock run out. Somebody's cow's over eating up Sister Simpson's garden. Uh, so that if I don't get that, oh, wait a minute, here comes Cedric. I'll get him to do the feeding while I go and straighten this thing out. Some folks ain't got no more regard for the law than nothing around here. Yeah, they ought to be made to pay for it. Why, sure they have. I'll see what they do, too, or keep the cow. That's what I'll do. Howdy, Cedric. Uh, come in here, Cedric. I want you to go out back there and feed that stock for me. I've got to go over to Sister Simpson and do some constable work. There ain't nobody been fighting over there, are they? No, no, it's somebody's cow over there eating up a garden. Now, go on now, and don't forget to feed the possum and the coon. Yes, Mom. Look okay, at that boy, the latest human I ever seen. Now, hey, wait a minute, that's Sister Simpson again, I reckon. Yeah, go ahead now. Yeah, I'll get it. Hello. Yeah, this is him. Huh? They here? Uh, who does it belong to? Yeah, well, that's the second complaint I've had. And well, I'll be right over there. Well, now, don't you worry. I'll see it whoever it belongs to pays you every bit of the damage. Yes, Mom. All right, well, I'll be right over. All right, goodbye. That blame folks around here ain't got no respect for the law. The constable neither one looks like. 
What's the matter now? Why, somebody's goats over at Miss Phillips. He broke in the yard and eating the clothes right off in the clothesline over yeah. there. Don't ever add up to a birthday of Phillips in best dresses, he said. Well, you just ought to make an example of whoever that stock belongs to. I know that I'll make them buy some brand new ones. That's what I'll do. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Abner, Mr. Abner. Come huh? out here quick. I ain't got time, Cedric. I just now got another call. Well, you better come out here back here before you go, though. What's the matter? Well, somebody's left the gate open back there and all your stocks got out. Oh, my... Huh? Yeah, you're going to make an example out of whoever owns that stuff. <laughs> well, I'll be dead blamed. You want me to get out and see if I can round them up for you? Yeah, but now, Cedric, uh, don't you tell them that you know who they belong to, though. I know I don't want to make no example out of myself. I know that. <laughs> well, we're afraid Abner's troubles have just begun. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look in for just a moment at the home of the Stewarts. Tom Stewart is home early from work. Let's see what happens. Well, Tom, what are you doing home? You're half an hour early. Yeah, I don't feel so good again. Tom, you've not lost your job. That's what it is. That's why you're home. Oh, stop it. The job's still all right. I just said it was me. Well, dinner's not ready, of course. It's okay with me. Don't want any. Tom, you're not really sick. Now, what did you have for lunch? Oh, the usual. Small steak and whatnot. Oh, no wonder you don't feel so good. You eat too much. Do you know that you weigh more than you should? Well, a fellow must eat. Yes, I know, but not all that. Listen, Tom... Why don't you try the Horlick weight control plan? That's how I keep so slim. How? Well, I just drink a glass of Horlick's malted milk at noon instead of my regular lunch. And then have tea, I suppose, around four. No, I don't. You don't need any more after Horlick's. You mean you last a whole day on a glass of Horlick's? Say, where's the cat? No, it's true. Horlick's is nourishing, Tom. Sustaining, too. It keeps your appetite satisfied. And that's just what you need. Of course... You can take another glass of Horlicks or a few Horlicks tablets in mid-afternoon if you wish to. Well, I'll give it a trial. But I've got to do something. Seems to have kept your weight down all right and kept you feeling fit at the same time. And that, folks, is just what the Horlick weight control plan does. It helps you keep down your weight. By cutting down on heavy lunches, you feel more alert. Try out this plan yourself and see how much better you feel. This is Carlton Bricker speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks who now bid you all good night and good health.